In today's video, I'm going to give you a strategy with the 131 half court trap that you could run with your team and that I've had success with myself and other coaches I've recently talked to have actually had similar success as myself. So let's get down and let's check this out. So right now we are protecting this net and of course the team that we are playing against is dribbling the ball down the court in that direction. Now what I like to have is my two fastest players at the bottom and at the top. They don't necessarily have to be the tallest player down here because this guy can crash the boards. And basically the idea here is to be able to trap the players at half court and to trap the players in the corners. One of the ways that teams will try and beat a 1-3-1 is by either trying to pass the ball to the middle or pass the ball down to the corner. So what player 5 needs to do is to make sure that he is front facing whoever is trying to set up in the middle of the court, usually somewhere around that three point line area. I have my slowest but strongest player set up in the middle, and then I've got my center or my two biggest players who are the fastest out of the bigger players along the sidelines. This way, we've got the fastest player who can run to the corners quickly and intercept those passes from the from the, uh, going to the corners. We have the strongest, slowest player in the middle because here, we want him to be strong enough to front face, but we want him to be big as well so that he's got the wingspan to intercept passes. I want my other fastest player up top because he is the one who's going to be, of course, forcing the ball handler towards the corners. And we want these guys to be somewhat big because the, they again have to try and be big to, of course, disrupt the pass. So let's say, for example, we have how most teams will try and beat the half-court trap. Many teams will try and, of course, dribble through the gap, and when that happens, we want to try and close that off. Player 3 doesn't want to double right away. What he wants to do is to kind of stunt the man, be patient, and try to direct that man towards the sideline, in which case, at that point, we would then trap. Player 2 needs to move over. Player 4 needs to move down. Player 4 is now the one who is protecting the paint. Player 5 is still protecting that middle, and Player 2 is going to be intercepting that pass. Meanwhile, player 5 needs to be able to front face. There's no passing back over half, so player 2 may try to cut through, but that's going to be a very tough pass. At this point, he is trapped, and if you've got a fast enough 2 guard or 1 guard down in the post who's able to get out to that sideline, then there should be some pretty good interceptions. Another way that teams will try to beat it, which is how I personally like to try and beat a 1-3-1, is by having this middleman set up a screen for the ball handler. The ball handler will use that screen and in most cases the defense will make the mistake and have player 5 come out and in which case that screen and roll you'll be able to hit player 3 up and now you're in a 3 on 1 situation or sometimes maybe a 3 on 2 in which case you're going to probably be able to get a shot off or score. What needs to happen instead after this screen instead of player 5 moving out to guard that we want player 3 we want player 3 to guard that screen and roll, so that when player 1 comes off, if player 3 rolls to the basket, player 5 is still there, player 2 can move over because of course there's still that pass option here, and if player 5 is cutting back door, player 4 can cut that off. If there's a pass back over to player 2 to try to attack that side, player 1 should be trying to be as big as possible to of course disrupt that pass, in which case player 1 would be forced to then go to the corner and of course they are again in a trap and they have been trapped. Now the really nice thing for myself with running a 1-3-1 is I'll actually drop back into the half court version of the 1-3-1 or we go into my unbeatable defense. And with my unbeatable defense it's still a trap in the corner but it's a double in the low post as well. So definitely go check that out down in the description below. It's called the unbeatable basketball defense. But if you don't run that strategy, you could run this secondary strategy that I like to run occasionally as well, which is player 5 drops to the free throw line, player 2 is still guarding that low post because he has to run out to the corners, player 3 moves down to the free throw line extended, same as player 4, and player 1 then drops to, of course, the 3 point line. The same strategy does exist still, so for example, if they are running a 5 out offense, 
which most teams do, then at that point, if they pass over to player four, we're going to have player four blue come over and try to stunt him. Player two is going to move over, player three is going to move down, and player one is going to move over to try and trap and force player four into this corner. Player five can then move up and guard the point. And if they swing the ball over to player five, we would then have player four go and trap. Player five watch the high post because this guy's going to cut. And now we've got that trap happening in this corner. Player one is going to be watching any reverse passes out. Player five is still watching the high post and now player three is watching the low post. And the same thing would happen on the opposite side as well. These are fantastic strategies. Make sure to go check out my unbeatable basketball zone defense book down in the description below, but also my complete guide to the five out basketball offense down there as well. I'll see you guys again next time.